1997, by accident, I began my life um, in the public sphere, which means that I was not a politician, but I was picked up, had a meeting with, with the chief minister at that time, and I suddenly became the agriculture minister of Punjab, de facto. And that was the time when I realized what Pakistan is all about, what government is all about, which is a very essential part of it. So I had been working for years, I was almost 50 by then, but I had no clue about the real Pakistan. When I went out there, representing government, going out, meeting with people, I realized that the basic problem of this country, the really basic problem is the, uh, our inability to provide and get social services to the people of Pakistan. So my mind at that time, this was the biggest problem, not GDP growth, not any of the other fancy things, but delivering social services to the people. So it was not a question about money. I could see uh, in the last 10 years before pre-1997, when I looked at the record, billions of dollars had been spent on building schools and hospitals and sewage schemes and water, uh, water drinking schemes and things like that. But they had not reached the people. So they, the whole of Punjab and the rest of the country is a graveyard of failed schemes. So I started thinking about how this can be done. How can this be changed? How can we get development to the people? So I started to find out who were the people who had successfully done some things to that effect. And uh, the first person I came across was a guy called Shaf Sultan Khan, if you can put his picture up, somebody. Mr. Shaf Sultan Khan. He had gone into Gilgit, Baltistan, and he had walked into remote villages, and he had sat them down and started to talk with them, the process of dialogue. And he, what he was saying to them was, that the government cannot change your life. Nobody from the sky is going to drop and change your life. You have to change your own life. And this is a revolutionary message. And in the end of seven or eight years of hard work, he completely transformed that area. Villages became vibrant, communities developed, people, uh, villages became wealthy. All, the the, all that happened was that a bit of capital was injected, but the people did what they wanted to do. Nobody dictated to them. Nobody told them, Aapne ye karna hai. They said, Humne ye karna hai. then let's find out where the resources are and where can we get the money, but we will do it ourselves. When I went to Aftar Amin, uh, when I went to Shah Sultan, he said, Ke bhai, aap baatein to baat kar rahein, aap ka ye background hai, aap government mein bhi kaam karte ho. Agar aap mere saath kaam karna chaate ho, to you come with me and do what I do. Which means go to villages and, and conduct a dialogue. And amazingly, that's the first time I found out about the real people of Pakistan. When he went into a village, with him, it was all set up. Villages would, villages would get together in the mosque or in a community hall, and he would start a dialogue. Believe me, for the first hour, nobody was talking. The villagers, well, they were talking, they were speaking, but they were not talking. They would si try to size us up, and I went into many dialogues with him, so I realized. They, they would size us up and say, Ye kya karne hai pe? what do they want to hear? Let's just tell them what they want to hear so that so they can disappear fast. They didn't want to talk to us. Ghanta, Deir Kebad, with Shah Sultan's own way, then real conversation would start. And they would start speaking the truth, and the truth was very bitter. They were alienated. Uh, they just did not trust government. They did not trust NGOs. They did not trust any do-gooder, because they said these people come with preconceived ideas. They have no idea what we're all about. As an example of that, I'll, I'll uh, give you an example. <coughs> I was trying to start a health project, which later on took off and became a, a very large project in Pakistan called the People's Primary Healthcare Initiative. But when I was having a dialogue uh, with villages in the area, my, uh, my idea was to take a basic health unit which is not functional without a doctor and put in a doctor and ask people if, they would, uh, if that would work. So I would ask people, uh, I'll provide a doctor, will you come? And they said no. Why not? Because he'll write a medicine, 
he'll write out a prescription and then we'll have to go to the town to get it anyway, so you might as well go to town. So I said, if we provide medicines, will you pay for it? Normal question from me because, you know, one is concept is that poor people can't afford to pay. And when I said that, everybody there was a, started laughing. There was a collective outburst because then they looked at me strangely and said, what do you think we do now? When we get ill, what do you think we do now? They should have said, you idiot, but they didn't say that. So, fundamental problem of this country is that there is a complete disconnect between the elite and between the people of Pakistan. We, you, all of us are belong to a different society. They belong to a different society. We have a very, we look at the poor very superficially. We look at our servants, we don't look at what the servant does when he goes home, how does he react with his children, what are his issues. We just look at them very superficially. When we, we started to then use what Mr. Shahab Sultan had taught us, we trusted communities, we started to build with communities. In agriculture, we started to train communities and everything changed once we do that. Then I also looked at another person, who was Shahab Sultan. So I thought Shahab Sahib was my mentor, but his mentor was a guy called Akhtar Hamid Khan. And Akhtar Hamid Khan was Pakistan, one of Pakistan's greatest men, one of Pakistan's greatest social scientists. Uh, I can say that completely, absolutely true. He's the guy who started Orangi Pilot Project. Orangi Pilot Project is, uh, is a project he, uh, in Karachi in which he talked to the people and he told them in a slum, in a slum without any sewage, people um, would throw out their garbage into their gully, they would throw out their sanitation into the gully, everything. And he said that the gully, the lane is an extension of your home, so it is your responsibility to take care of it. And he created communities around the lanes and magically changed a huge amount of slums in Karachi. So I asked him to come to Lodra, my home, <coughs> and helped me start the, project, start the project to do the same thing. He very was kind, he was in his 80s, and this was just two years before he died. And this is the first time he left Karachi and came over to the Punjab to start something like that. He started it. Um, we went into Lodra, this is what a gully looks like with, and there's no sewerage. And remember this, people living in the houses have bathrooms. They have bathrooms. So they take a shower in the morning and do whatever has to be done. They get ready to go to office and they step out and they step out into their own garbage. Every day of their life. Apart from the fact this is bad for health and children will get ill. The government is unable to, unable to fix this. Millions and billions have been spent all over Pakistan but this, solution, this, this problem has not been solved. So the, the, we, we got the community together, we talked to them, they invested some money, we invested some money, and lo and behold, we have a street like this. Same street, not a really amount of issues spent. <laughs> and the people did it themselves. The government didn't come, we didn't come, we gave them the technical know-how, but who did the The government did it. And they owned it and they were responsible for keeping it clean and keeping the sewerage running. Next. So this is people who work themselves if you empower them. Next. Give me the duba. Right. Hold it right here. This is a story I'm telling you only to illustrate my point. This is a place called Khanpur. This is a pond of sewerage water. Called, they call it duba there. When I went into Khanpur, I was told this Dubai had been there for 20 years. It infected all the groundwater in the entire area. Nobody had been able to fix it. 10 years before this picture was taken, a uh, million rupees, mil many million rupees sewage scheme was laid down, but it never worked, and the Dubai remained. I sent in Mr. Akhtar Hamid Khan, Dr. Akhtar Hamid Khan's person he had given me called here, Hafiz Arai, and I said, Hafiz, see if you can find a solution. He came back to me three weeks later and said, we have a solution. I said, how much will it cost? He said, 5 lakh rupees lagenge, or 2 minutes lagenge, or jitni saaf ho jayegi. And I said, why? He said, <coughs> there is the, the, the sewerage line that was laid works, is just blocked, and you have to clean it. I said, but 
We have been trying for 10 years to find a solution. How did you find a solution? So he said, I did not go to the head of the sanitation department. I did not go to the head of the municipality. I went to the sweepers who cleaned the lines. And they told me, you're the first guy who's asking us, so we're going to tell you, and you look poor yourself. Otherwise, we haven't told this secret to anybody else. Because there is a complete disconnect. Our government operates from the top down, not from, bottom, from, from the bottom up. So there is no information on the real problems. People sit in air-conditioned offices, and they take decisions saying that we know better because we speak better English and we wear better clothes, so therefore we are smarter. That's never true. So this was um, cleaned up in three weeks, as promised by Mr. Hafiz Arai. And who did it? Listen, look at these people. Can I, show, can I have the faces of the people, please? This was a huge, huge uh, pond. By the way, this is now cleaned up and there's a park now. Can you fast forward to the people? Anyway, we will show you just the faces of the people who solved Hanpur's biggest problem with only 500,000 rupees expenditure that we did. My point that I'm trying to make is, and I have five more minutes to go, is the fundamental disconnect between the elite of Pakistan and the people of Pakistan has resulted in a fundamental disconnect between government and the people. Decisions are taken top down, nobody listens to real people. And this takes me back to a lesson I learned in, in when I was doing an MBA at the uh, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. We had a guest lecturer who came in and he said, a very successful businessman, and he said that one of my basic principles in life is when I buy a new company, I will go and talk to the people who, the first people who deal with the customer. So the company he had just bought, he said, I went not to the top CEO's room, I went to the operator's room. And I motivated those operators because that bunch of, those bunch of females were the, pe were the first interaction between the customer and my company. So you go to the field and you find out what the reality is. You go to the last person in the link of the chain if you want to know what's real. And that's what Mr. Hafiz Arain did and he ended up cleaning it. So what is the solution to Pakistan's issues then? We have to reinvent governance. We have to absolutely reinvent the way we govern this country. We have to go and forget about taking decisions by ourselves sitting in Lahore, Karachi, Islamabad and Peshawar. We have to, we have to devolve decision making right down to the people. We have to give it down to the village. We have to empower the community. We have to trust the people of Pakistan. They may not speak the language we do. They may be poor. They may not be very educated because we never gave them a chance. But they are wise people. And they know how to solve their own is issues better than we can. This lesson I have taken all across Pakistan, and I have, it has never gone wrong. You can trust them with money. You can trust them with knowledge. You can trust them with anything. Once you raise their level of motivation and you empower them. So top-down approach has to finish and a bottom-up approach has to come and communities have to be empowered and they will find their own solutions with the money and the capital you must provide. But they must share the capital also because unless they share, unless they share, they can do not own it. Finally, can it be done in this political setup? No, it can't be done in this political setup. Unless politicians change, the country will not change. Unless we change, unless you force the change, unless you vote for people who understand these things, this country will not change. Because the system is too entrenched. So we have to recognize heroes like Akhtar Hamid Khan and Shah Sultan, bring them up, change the way we spend our money, and go down to where the people are. At the end of the day, think about this, my last few seconds. Think about the fact, we now have a government which is trying to deal with a passive population. Decisions are imposed, villagers wake up one day and uh, somebody comes in and says, we've given you this. 
without thinking of how and why, who's going to maintain that. Imagine a Pakistan in which all communities are empowered, are motivated, and there are hundreds of thousands of people, even millions of people, who get together and work for the betterment of their own little community, for their own school, for their own district. And that is what will change Pakistan, when you have millions of people motivated and working on their own and developing a dynamic Pakistan. We have to get the people involved. Thank you very much.